Hey, friend, Chris Van Viver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today, I want to give you three tips and maybe a bonus tip for how to immediately level up your reverb game in Logic Pro 10. And this could be for the stock plugins such as Chromaverb and Space Designer or third-party options as well. It doesn't really matter. Reverb can be a tough cookie to crack. I mean, we all use it to add ambience, to add space, special effects, glue a mix together. And yet it's a very fine line between a mix that has ambience and space and clarity and a mix that's kind of been overcooked with reverb. Sounds muddy, sounds indistinct, kind of washy. And so these three tips will immediately help you kind of rein in and focus your reverb. So it's the best it can be for your songs and projects. To demonstrate these tips, I'm gonna focus in on the drums and guitars in one of the new starter grids that came with the 10.5 update. And this is the Solaris starter grid. Very disco, very four on the floor, I love it. Let's take a quick listen to just one of the scenes so we have an idea. Awesome, right? Now, these tips are not genre specific, whether you work on electronic music or hip hop, rock music, acoustic guitar, really sparse stuff, doesn't really matter. These tips still apply. Okay, let's dig into the drums to start with. I'm gonna solo the drums and I'm gonna send the drums to the reverb that comes with the project. Out of the gate, these drums don't have any reverb applied. So maybe for the style of music, we wouldn't wanna use it, but I'm going to use it. Now we have an instance of chromoverb, which I love. Let's take a quick listen to this reverb. Awesome, but I have something very specific in mind. So I'm gonna dig into the chambers and drum chamber. Take a listen. Awesome, feels very anthemic, like we're at a music club somewhere. I'm very much a preset guy. I don't try to reinvent the wheel. I don't try to create a reverb from scratch, though you're welcome to. I just dig through the presets of the different plugins, try to find something that fits with the idea that I have in my head and then fine tune from there. Okay, let's dig into number one. Number one in our list of ways to up our reverb game in Logic is to EQ our reverbs. Now you don't always have to do this, but EQ is a great way to kind of rein in and focus our reverb on the most important bits of our instruments. Most often we apply a reverb to a bunch of our instruments in our project and we just say, okay, once and done, we're good to go. But reverbs don't create the same exact echo over and over again in a predictable manner like a delay might. Reverbs emulate spaces and spaces are very complex things. The space can change and evolve just based on modulation of the space, based on how much frequency information we're pumping into the space, so we're exciting more and more of the room. Very often, the low-end instruments can cause the room to get overexcited and just sound indistinct and muddy, while the top end can also sound a little too brittle and bright based on the preset. With EQ, we're able to tighten up the sound and response of a room. And what's wonderful is that Chromaverb and Space Designer both have an output EQ. So we're able to EQ the reverb after the sound of the reverb. So Chromaverb, it's in the details section, the output EQ. Again, if you're using a third-party reverb, the tip still applies. Just place a channel EQ or any EQ after your reverb on the reverb auxiliary channel strip. So right about here. Okay, I would start with a high pass and a low pass filter. With these filters, we can kind of bracket in on the sound that we're after. Anything above the corner frequency of the low pass filter will be rolled off or removed and anything below the corner frequency of the high pass filter will be rolled off or removed. This is very helpful for bracketing in on our sound. So let's give it a try. I'll just back these out, and I'm going to play around with these two filters. Take a listen. Okay, let's hear it before and after. Do you hear that? We've kind of rolled out a lot of the mud of the kick drum and we rolled off a tiny bit of the top end. I didn't want to take it all away, but just rein it in. So now our reverb sounds more focused. It doesn't sound as muddy and boomy, but it really all depends on the instrument and your goal with the instrument. For example, sometimes I want to add air and presence to cymbals, to snaps or claps, to a vocal. And so I don't want to add a low pass filter. Instead, I want to have that high end to add that presence, that air. Sometimes I'm trying to add, you know, body to a snare using a plate reverb. 
So maybe I'll bracket right around 100 hertz to like 2K, really the meat of the snare. Just keep in mind, what are you trying to accomplish with your reverb for the selected instrument? And also keep in mind that darker sounds tend to sound farther away from us and brighter sounds tend to sound closer to us. Not all the time, but generally. We can also use a low shelf and a high shelf and parametric bands. I'm gonna tuck down a little bit of mud I'm hearing. Take a listen. Okay, let's hear this in the mix now. I'm gonna dial back the reverb to a more tasteful level, but let's take a listen. And without our EQ changes here. You know, just adding more focus. We're adding the subtle sense of ambience without overpowering the mix. Okay, number two in our list of tips for leveling up reverb is to add vibe to your reverbs. Now, when we think of analog delays and reverbs and EQs, usually it's because there's a vibe. There's nonlinearities or there's distortion or saturation, just something that kind of gives it a little more glue and life. And the way I like to do this is to use distortion or drive or some sort of emulation. Check it out. I'm going to open up the overdrive plugin in the distortion folder. I'm going to drive this up a bit. Tone, bring this down, try to level match it. So let's take a listen to just the drums again with the distortion. You hear that? It's a subtle flavor, but it just kind of fattens up our reverb. Let's now try one of my favorites, the Vintage EQ Collection. And I love using the drive section to add analog vibe to instruments, to track stacks, to reverbs. I'm just going to drive it to 11, bring down the volume here. Let's take a listen to this. Pretty awesome. I'm also gonna test drive the tape delay. And I've made videos about using tape delay for adding saturation to tracks. I'm gonna turn the feedback to zero, tempo sync off, and delay time to zero. So all we're really using is the character of this emulation. And I'll actually set the wet to about 80% because there is a volume boost. Let's check this out now. So it's adding a subtle glue and flavor to our reverb. Let's now introduce all three and hear this in the mix and I'll turn them both on and off. You know, it's just adding a little more vibe. It's a pretty dense mix, but I'm really digging it. All right, number three in our list. I'm going to hone in on this electric guitar. I'm going to send it down the center, and I'm going to set bus two to 100%. I'm going to turn off the stereo delay for now and just hone in on Space Designer. So we have this stage plate. Let's hear it. That's cool, but I'm going to look for something a little more obnoxious. So I'm going to look at this dark rising hall. Take a listen. Cool, so we have this pad that really kind of comes up underneath the electric guitar a little too much. If you hear it in mono, it's even more obvious. So I have two ideas in mind with compression to manage this. Number one, let's just try with regular compression. I'm gonna set the Studio FET. This is a compressor that was inspired by an 1176 style of compression, not a direct emulation just inspired by. I set the attack pretty fast here. And I'm going to leave much of everything else left alone. 
but I'm gonna bring down the threshold on this reverb. Check it out. And let's hear it now before we added this. And with. Sometimes reverbs can poke their heads out a little too much at inopportune moments and just kind of disappear as well. Reverbs can feel very inconsistent. Now I'm picking a reverb that's a little over the top, but with this compression, we're really sitting on this reverb. So the attack is being smushed and we're bringing up the sustain. It feels more level and it's not poking out as much. But since this reverb might be used more as a special effect, I have a different idea. Let's set the side chain to our electric guitar. Now, instead of the reverb exceeding the threshold, telling the compressor when to compress, the guitar is going to be what the compressor looks at for a cue of when to compress. I'm gonna set the ratio eight to one. I'm gonna leave my attack very fast, but set the release instead of auto to about a thousand milliseconds here. And let's take a listen now. Do you hear that? The reverb is being squashed by the compressor when the guitar is playing, but when the guitar stops performing, the reverb swells up in a very cool way. This sidechain technique is great for instruments like vocals. Perhaps you want a very long haul type of preset for your vocal reverb, but it's kind of washing out the vocal performance a little too much. By using a sidechain compressor, you can have the compressor look at the vocals for when to compress, tucking down the reverb while the vocals are singing, and then when the vocals are done performing at the end of a phrase, the reverb swells up in a very cool, very special effects sort of way. Let's hear this in the mix. And if we hear it in stereo. It can be a great technique. Now, my bonus tip for you is how to manage the stereo width of a reverb. And I don't just mean expanding stereo width. Sometimes you need to control stereo width. Now, the easiest way to manage the stereo width of a reverb is changing it from mono to stereo by clicking on the circle right in the input section. So if we set it to mono, now it's just straight down the center and you can pan it as you need. But sometimes we want a stereo reverb, we just wanna control elements of the reverb. So let's go back to our drums here and let's open up Chromaverb. And right down here, we have this width section. If I drive the width down to 0%, the reverb is gonna to collapse to mono. And then if I drive it up, we're gonna expand the stereo width of the entire reverb. And at 150%, we're expanding beyond what is kind of natural for the room. With this mono maker slider, we can tell Chromaverb, hey, below a certain frequency, we want to keep that mono, above can be in stereo. When we're working with a complex instrument such as a drum kit or a whole mix, very often we want the low end to stay central in the mix. It's more mono compatible, it keeps things from sounding too muddy or washy. Let's bring this up to about 200 hertz and take a listen. Do you hear how the low end tightens up? That's really helpful. And both Chromaverb and Space Designer have this option. For Space Designer, it's labeled a little different. We have this crossover frequency and we can actually adjust the low and the high spread. So it's not just mono or full width. The low spread, we can identify anything below this crossover frequency and the high spread is anything above it. So check it out. Let's bring in our guitar track. Let's hear this. You may not need to use this a lot, but for instruments like drums that are very complex, 
I very often want to manage the stereo width of the reverb. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, YLogicProRules.com. Every week, I'm posting new emails, videos, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.